Hey guys, what's up? Pat here from Mountain Sledder. What the heck is the Peeps Eye Probe? You want to know? Well, I'm going to tell you what makes this thing different than your regular dumb probe. All right, so you're probably wondering what the heck is this thing and how is it different than say like your standard probe. So a regular probe is basically used to locate an avalanche victim after you've done a fine search with your transceiver. And basically every probe is the same. Peeps took a look at that probe and decided how can we make this more intelligent or how can we make this probe work faster in the rescue system? So how does it work? Within the tip of the eye probe is an antenna that can detect a 457 kilohertz avalanche transceiver signal. So that tip will detect that signal and the probe will indicate how close you are to the transceiver within a certain range. It's got an optical and an acoustic hit indicator. So that is essentially an electronic hit, making a physical strike not necessary. So you can think of the eye probe tip as having, rather than just a very small tip, a one meter diameter tip where you can pinpoint a victim. It's all about reducing pinpointing probing time and that can save valuable minutes in avalanche rescue. All right, so how does it work? It seems like the eye probe might be a little bit confusing, but it's really not. To turn it on, you just extend the probe just like you normally would. As soon as it's tensioned, that turns it on. So when you turn it on, it's gonna go through a self-check. So the first thing that will happen is these two lights will come on green and they go on solid green for a second. That indicates that the self-check was okay. If you get some red flashing lights, that indicates that the battery is low, so it's time to replace the battery in this thing. So here's how the eye probe works. When you've completed your fine search with your transceiver, you extend the probe, get it ready. And then once it's good, it's gonna start alternating, flashing back and forth. And then you begin probing the snow. So in this case, we've simulated a burial of about almost two meters down below the snow. And we're gonna try and pinpoint that victim beneath the snow. So as you can see, or you can hear, so far we've got no indication that there's a transceiver, but I would have been brought in here by my fine search and now I'm gonna start probing. So. As I probe into the snow and the tip gets closer, once we get within two meters, we're gonna start getting that flashing blue light and the beeping tone. That's gonna to indicate that we're getting close within two meters of that transceiver. Now, as we get closer and I get within 50 centimeters, it's gonna to change to a solid tone to indicate I've got a hit now and the lights are gonna go solid. And by now we should have our shovels out and we should be digging away. So I just want to demonstrate how the sleep mode works with the iProbe compatible Peeps transceivers. So right now we're finding the transceiver that's down below. And uh, I'm going to use the probe to put that transceiver into sleep mode. And then that should uh, stop showing on here and that's gonna make it easier to find any of our other buried transceivers in this potential scenario. So here we go. Now, if I leave that there long enough, it's gonna start to beep. If this is a iProbe compatible transceiver like this one is here and those five quick beeps, that's indicating that it's putting the transceiver into sleep mode. And now, as you can see, it's no longer appearing on this transceiver. So now that transceiver is no longer transmitting, but we've already pinpointed the victim and putting that transceiver into sleep mode is gonna make it a lot easier to find any other buried victims out there in some sort of multiple burial situation. Now, if I wanna wake that transceiver back up, all I need to do is remove the probe and that will have it start transmitting again. Now, once you've made a successful probe strike, you never wanna remove your probe until you've made contact with that victim by digging them out. But for example, in this case, if I want to be able to allow that transceiver to start transmitting again, all I need to do is remove the probe. So as we've seen, the eye probe's really cool. What are some of the limitations of it? Well, first of all, it's quite a bit more expensive. Uh, this probe costs $260, so it's about two and a half times what a normal probe would cost. Another limitation is the weight. This probe is 390 grams, whereas a standard probe is on average around 260 grams. So you're looking at about 50% more weight, although it's not really that much. 
The only other sort of limitation to the iProbe would be the battery. And so that battery should be removed, just like you remove them from your transceiver every summer or when you put it into storage, you should remove the battery from the iProbe as well. That would be easy to remember when you do your transceiver as well. A couple other quick details. The iProbe comes in a 220 centimeter length, 260 centimeter length, and a 300 centimeter length. It takes one AA battery, and that battery should last about two hours of operational time. So that's gonna be more than you need in the case of an avalanche rescue scenario. The main advantage of the iProbe is that you can get a quicker pinpoint strike, and that's gonna allow you to start digging faster and save time. It's also gonna eliminate the possibility of a false strike, such as a hard lump of snow, a stump, a tree, something like that under there that might trick you into thinking that you've made a successful strike with a normal probe, and in truth, you haven't. So that could save a lot of time in that scenario. And the other cool advantage is that it can put a Peeps iProbe compatible transceiver to sleep, and that can really help in a multiple burial situation uh, where it puts that transceiver to sleep, it's no longer transmitting, and other people that are searching different areas of the debris aren't gonna be drawn back in and be fooled coming back into this area that's already being excavated or dug out. So that's a really cool advantage as well. And I think one of the coolest things about it is that it can give you a confirmation that you're getting close when you're probing because a lot of times you really don't have an idea whether you're close to a person or not based on your find search. You get as close as you can with your transceiver and then you start going in your spiral pattern. But you know, if to get that confirmation and those beeps that you're within two meters to start, I mean, that's really gonna build a lot of confidence for a person when they're stressed out in an avalanche rescue situation. So that's a really cool factor as well. So just to summarize everything we learned about the Peeps Eye Probe, you know, avalanche rescue gear only serves one purpose. You might as well use the best that you can afford. And the Peeps Eye Probe is a really ingenious way of improving on what is otherwise a totally unintelligent piece of rescue gear. You know, Peeps is thinking hard about how can we make each component of the rescue more efficient and go faster and save valuable time during that rescue. And that could ultimately save a life. All right, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.